During the 1820s and 1830s, tensions increased between the Mexican government and Texas settlers. The Constitution of 1824 gave more power to the states of Mexico. With a states' rights government and an increasing population of settlers from the United States, officials feared that Texas would leave Mexico and join the United States. Mexico knew it had to find some way to control Texas, so officials passed the law of April 6, 1830. This law limited immigration from the United States in an attempt to slow, if not stop, immigration. Slaves could no longer be brought into Texas. Most detrimental to the settlers was the provision that placed customs duties on all imports from the United States. Settlers were angry and they protested. Then Mexico gained a new leader, Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana. Soon he controlled all of Mexico. This was alarming news for the settlers. One Mexican official, Colonel Juan Davis Bradburn, was involved in a conflict over escaped slaves. When William T. Logan came to Anahuac seeking the escaped slaves, Bradburn refused to release them. Logan hired William Barrett Travis to represent him. Travis was arrested for attempting to trick a guard into releasing the slaves. His partner, Patrick Jack, was also arrested when he protested Travis's arrest. The protesting settlers drafted the Turtle Bayou resolutions, pledging their loyalty to Mexico. Travis and Jack were released. Although they were pleased with their victories, the settlers were not happy with some of the Mexican government's decisions. Delegates met in October 1832 to draft a set of resolutions. They elected Stephen F. Austin as the president of the convention. They promised allegiance under the Constitution of 1824 and called for the repeal of the law of April 6th. One of the most important resolutions was a request that the state of Coahuila y Tejas be divided so that each territory had its own government. Austin traveled to Mexico to present the resolutions directly to the Mexican government. Santa Ana agreed to most of the resolutions but would not allow separate statehood for Texas. After his meeting, Austin headed back home and was arrested along the way. Austin was accused of treason and was held in a Mexico City jail for a year. General Martin Perfecto de Cos was sent to Texas. His orders were clear, enforce Santa Ana's laws. Cos marched to San Antonio to enforce the orders. On his way, he was reminded by Colonel Yagartachea that the citizens of Gonzales had a six-pound cannon. Troops were sent to Gonzales to seize the cannon. The citizens of Gonzales refused to hand over the cannon. Then there was a standoff between the Texans and the Mexican army who stood across from each other on either side of the Guadalupe River. The settlers fired the tiny cannon and the Mexican troops retreated. The tiny cannon and the army of the people were ready to hit the road to revolution. Volunteers began to pour in. Since the Battle of Gonzales was over, they headed for San Antonio and the Texans began a month-long siege of the city. Ben Milam issued the challenge. Who will go into San Antonio with old Ben Milam? On December 5th, 300 Texans launched their attack. Fighting was fierce and Milam was one of the first to fall. Then Kos hoisted a white flag of surrender. The Texans had won and Kos led his troops out of Texas.